away last week. So we're very saddened by that, but we are gladdened by her beautiful spirit and how she touched all of us and the lessons that she gave to all of us. 
about serving humanity and understanding that we're all God's children, whatever our race, whatever our religion, however we choose to worship God, you know, we're all one big beautiful planet. And so we're going to dedicate the readings, we always do readings from different religions and poetry, we're going to dedicate these to the diversity of mankind in Elta's name tonight. Um, and then I have a little picture here, and there's a fun box if you want to donate. The donations will go to Child Spring International, who sponsored her. They're sending money home for the funeral um, and things like that, so feel free to do that. And this was a lovely painting her mother bought with probably very little cash. It was folded up in Elta's tiny little suitcase that she brought off the plane with two raggedy t-shirts and a couple pairs of raggedy shorts. This was all folded up. <coughs> And in the back, the mom inscribed it to, to us, the host family, thanking us for everything we did. So Lennon had it framed, and what a precious memory that is to me. So that's what that is. Um, we're going to start tonight by um, having a song. Faisé, you want to come up here? Faisé is going to sing the Lord's Prayer for us um, in honor of Elta. And then we'll move on to some things. So. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. desires for his brother that which he desires for himself. 
and the Baha'i faith. And if thine eyes be turned toward justice, choose thou for thy neighbor that which thou choosest for thyself. So if you haven't seen that, it's really neat. I have copies of it, but I thought it was pretty cool. Um, and then just reach your hand out if you want one, but I don't want to put anybody on the spot. If you want one, just take one. said to Lot, let's not have any quarreling between you and me or between your herdsmen and mine, for we are brothers. This is a quote from Albert Einstein. Mama, mama. The wiser you are, the more you believe in equality, because the difference between what the most and the least learned people know is inexpressibly trivial in relation to all that is unknown. Uh, Buddha, thousands of candles can be lit from a single candle, and the life of the candle will not be shortened. Happiness never decreases by being shared. Uh, this is Buddha. He who experiences the unity of life sees his own self in all beings, and all beings of his own self, and looks on everything with an impartial eye. Mother Teresa, God has created us to love and to be loved, and that is the beginning of prayer. To know that he loves me, that I have been created for greater things. This is from Muhammad Quran, chapter 49, verse 13. Honor each other, O oh mankind, we've created you from a male and female, and made you into nations and tribes that you may know and honor each other. Not that you should despise one another. Indeed, the most honorable of you in the sight of God is the most righteous. And this is Baha'u'llah. So powerful is the light of unity that it can illuminate the whole earth. This is from an essay on interreligious attitudes, Swami. 
different are the paths laid down in the Vedas, in Sankhaya, in Yoga, and in the Seva Vaishnava scriptures. Of these, some people regard one and some another as the best. Devotees follow these diverse paths, straight or crooked, according to their different tendencies. Yet, O oh Lord, Thou alone art the ultimate goal of all men, as the ocean is the goal of all rivers. Uh, let us have love and more love, a love that melts all opposition, a love that conquers all foes, a love that sweeps away all barriers, a love that abounds in charity, a lightheartedness, tolerance, forgiveness, and noble caring, a love that triumphs over all obstacles. Abdullah. This is from Sigmund Freud. Civilization is a process in the service of Eros, whose purpose is to combine single human individuals, and after their families, then their races, peoples, nations, into one great unity of mankind. This is why this has to happen, we do not know. The work of Eros is precisely this. Baha'u'llah wrote this in the 19th century. It is not for him to pride himself who loveth his own country, but rather for him who loveth the whole world. The earth is but one country, and mankind its citizens. Um, the Baha'i faith, the people's of the world, of whatever race or religion, derive their inspiration from one heavenly source and are the subjects of one God. Um, this is from Mohammed. Uh, you should show courtesy and be cordial with each other so that nobody should consider himself superior to another nor do him harm. Ye are all the fruits of one tree and the leaves of one branch. Deal ye one with another with the utmost love and harmony, with friendliness and fellowship. I think. Will you come up and grace us with one more song? <laughs> sure. I can. Can I stand here? Yeah. <coughs> you know, just like the colors of the rainbow, that the atmosphere has to be right, and then you see this very non-color atmosphere and it just breaks down to all these different colors and the possibility of this air and the beauty of the colors that we see so vividly is because of the different colors and the white light. Um, it's just like the rainbow and humankind is just like that rainbow. And that's what makes it so beautiful is the combination of all the different cultures and the colors. So I was thinking about that as Jennifer was talking about tonight and I thought, okay, what better than the classic Wizard of Oz song, <laughs> Somewhere Over the Rainbow. <laughs> so, I hope you enjoy it. Somewhere over the rainbow way Up high there's a place that I've heard of once, once in a lullaby. Somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue, and the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true. Someday I wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops. That's where
happy with two birds white beyond the rainbow white. Oh, white In the womb world, the light is not seen, the moon is not there, and the fragrance of this world is unattainable. Yet this fetus was content. Warmth was surrounding, nourishment was unending. My comfort zone was perfect. My space had no limited extent. I lived in absolute contentment. But to progress from this, I feared. When living in what you know and understand, any thought of change made me scared. Why change? Yes, we all fear the unknown, so in the womb I wish to stay. No understanding of play, I painfully delayed. But these useless limbs were growing, my comfort zone was shrinking, my body parts were cramping, and the inevitable pushed me on. Oh no, what fear, no knowledge of the next world, I painfully attached to the womb world. No desire to travel that unknown canal, I didn't care what light was at the end of the tunnel. Where am I going? Is there a place for me to go? Fear of the unknown. From the womb I had no knowledge of this world, I had no knowledge of its gifts, I was attached to my mother's stomach, it was all I needed, perfect, until my comfort zone grew uncomfortable, until the uncomfortable grew unbearable, until the unbearable grew so painful that I died. Yes, I died that day of September 19th, 1976. I died in the most painful way, fearing my own death while dying. Fearing my own death while dying, knowing of no afterlife, no belief in the afterlife. But little did I know that these death pains were my own birth pains in the heaven. This heaven. This place of sun, moon, art, and beauty, unimaginable from the womb to think I thought I had it all. Yes, my first death was hard, tearing my mother's limbs apart. I almost took her life by being so attached to a placenta that was thrown in the trash. If I had faith the first time, my transition would have been smooth. Luckily, I could not choose. And now, once again, I feel my comfort zone is getting tighter every day. This womb called Earth is getting smaller every day. Can you believe these legs I'm standing on? I once cursed. Having no use for them in the womb, they cram into a ball with little room to be how I want it to be. But now, look, I understand their meaning. And now I feel new arms and legs developing spiritual limbs for the next place God sends me. I may not understand their function now, but I will not curse these arms, these legs, these hands, these feet, these eyes. I will not curse them. I will not stunt their growth. Even though the arms of compassion and the eyes of unconditional love, the hands of generosity, the feet of faith, the legs of trustworthiness and are cramping at my comfort zone. But I must develop them, don't you see? Do you see, to develop these spiritual limbs, limbs now seems useless to many degrees, but I have faith they'll come in handy in creating who I'll be. When again come those death pains, I hope to know their duel simultaneously being my birth pains. I pray to have developed fully in this womb so I won't be crippled in my next womb. Unlike my last womb, womb in nine months was my set time. I know not the date of my next birthday, so I must prepare at all times. Fortunately, I feel I'm not alone. There's a presence right beyond. I feel my spiritual mother watching over me like I previously felt my mom. It's so funny my perspective thinking heaven is so far. When I'm in the next world's womb world already, the only distance is spiritual dawn on the wall. I feel the spiritual mother's hands rub her belly when I feel my heart is warm. 
I feel her rub her belly when I feel the spirit song. Yes, from the last room I did not have faith. I feared the unknown. I grabbed and reached back as the doctor pulled me out. It was so painful. Too painful. I almost killed my mom. But this next time I pray to be ready to enter the next world swiftly and pray to God that I'm strong as I enter that far but close beyond. There's coffee, there's hot water, and tea bags, and dessert. Please enjoy this dessert. Oh my God, dessert. Let's get some mango.